Hello, Rich Wilson here with my brand new podcast, Insane in the Fembrain. Insane in the uh, Fembrain. Greetings, one and all. Here we are again, another episode of Insane in the Fembrain. And I'm telling you, these conversations really have... They've, they really have blown my mind, actually. I, it's one of those things, you just assume that you know things. You know, I'm 48 years old. Do you think I would have learned a thing or two? I've had conversations with women, many women over the years, and you, you don't realise that you haven't really asked questions. You don't really know what it feels like. Because you're, I'm a man. I don't know what it feels like to be a woman. I don't know. I don't know. So, you know, I've gone back to basics with this podcast and I've just, um, and sometimes it might come across like some of these questions are glaringly obvious to a lot of people. They're like, why are you asking that? It's like, because, because I want to know. I want to know. And so I'm asking, you know, I think this is a great platform to do so. I might come across as a bit of a dick, but I'm trying not to. That's the, that's the thing. I don't want to be a dick. I'm trying not to be one. And I think a lot of men should take a leaf out of that book because there's a lot of them out there that still think they're doing all right. And a lot of them aren't. You go up your game, lads. Um, so, well, I, Jess, again, I've worked with Jess many times before. She's a brilliant comedian uh, and she's a, she's a brilliant human being, actually. Every time I've met, I don't remember not being friends with her. It's one of those, you, I don't remember where we met. We just, it's just one of those things you just kind of, I think that's a lot, a lot of that happens in comedy. You kind of, because you work with people a lot, you kind of forget where you first met. Unless it's, it's an extreme gig where you died on your hole. You seem to remember those. <laughs> or someone else will remember that you died on your hole. We're good at that. But she's just always been, every time I've seen her, we've always gotten along. And it was just really cool to have her on. And she really, really, you know, opened my, my eyes to a lot of stuff. So um, let's get into it, shall we? Here's Jess Foster Kid. And there isn't, there's no big introduction either. We just get tuck on with it. Tuck in. Just get, tuck the just, fuck in. Tuck the fuck in, Jess. You made me laugh. With your, it makes me laugh that you call your, you, you refer to your baby as a sexist baby. It's so sexist. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that true? Is it wow, just. Wow, I just think it, it is so I interesting that, yeah. like, yeah, I mean, he. There's loads of stuff that he does that I think it's just what kids do, but it's really, I find it very fun to interpret it as sexist. Of course it's not sexist at all. I've got work to do though. It is funny, isn't it? That you think maybe a lot of it's inherent, like it's in, it's in you from birth. Yeah, and it needs, yeah, than... exactly. It's the sin of Adam that you need to sort of, <laughs> yeah. you're born covered in the sin of sexism and the, and the weight and That's history it, yeah. of all of patriarchy. <laughs> and it's on, uh, it's on every parent <laughs> to wheedle it out of them. And all those words and and that, it, it, I know you're joking, but other men will go, oh, this again, this shit again. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, no, hang on, we got to, this is what we've got to talk about. You know, it's, because I know that Jade's, Jade's very, very, uh, she's always getting, like we were, watch, we were watching watching the other day we watched Once Upon a Time in America the Quentin Tarantino oh, yeah. film yeah I don't know I haven't seen it we saw it's alright but Jade was like I'm not having this this is this is bullshit this is the patriarchy in full effect is this the most recent like, one where it's just loads of dead women <laughs> yeah just loads of brutal Most, brutal yeah. violence and killing there's brutal violence at the end, yeah, <laughs> and it's yeah, two women get it, and it's like, yeah, I see your point. <laughs> up till <laughs> up till that point, it was like it was like oh, Margot Robbie's hardly in this. They go, I oh, know, but you know, it was part, of, mate, because we didn't know, we know the we know the the true story about what happened to Sharon, Sharon Tate. Oh, wow, right. We, we just we just thought it was going to end up like that, but then it takes this sort of left turn and it goes off. And I got to be honest, we were all settling going, oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. why everyone hates this film. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he didn't, I don't think he needed to to do that. No. But, uh, yeah, but yeah, Jade, it's, I did say the other day, I'm like, Jade, you don't need to be a feminist in the house. We're all, in, we're all on your side, mate. <laughs> and it, uh, you know, I was joking, but it, it, that took a turn. <laughs> <as> well, <so. laughs> <laughs> oh, relationships in lockdown. Yeah, man. Um, it's very difficult. It's very difficult when you're trying to say, I'm not part of the patriarchy. And then you say something, you go, oh, God, it's in me, isn't yeah. it? It's there. Yeah, yeah, you know? for sure. And I think, yeah, like you say, it's either, well, I, I, I say this a lot. I'm from, I I'm from, I think I'm like one of the last generations that were told how, like you had to be a real man, like yeah. you know, push your feelings down. Yeah, and yeah. This is your role. This is the woman's role. Oh, I mean, and, I know, think I mean, there's lots so. of younger generations outside of our like 
lovely media y creative work oh, yeah. life bubble. I think that there's still loads of boys being brought up to be proper boys. You know, it's um, yes. you s- hear it everywhere. I used to have a bit of uh, stand up about it, but oh, it's in the show that I've sort of had to stop halfway through touring, but um, uh, I how it really went down is I, I was walking down the street with my kid and he had a top on that had a glittery unicorn on it. And, um, and this t- stopped to talk to a neighbor. I don't know very well. And she, she genuinely in the middle of the chat about bins or something turned around and looked at him and said, yeah. well, I don't understand why people aren't bringing up boys to be proper men anymore. It was like, what? Oh, wow. oh God. Yeah. Like, you know, and obviously in the moment <laughs> yeah. I just bottled it and went right. Okay, right, yep. And <laughs> didn't, I didn't, didn't I know, yeah, got, at all. Yeah, yeah. I did get a useful bit of stand-up out of it. Um, yeah, I always think of a great thing to say a year later when it's a honed I think we all do that, yeah. Well, we and we build up the courage yeah. as well, don't we? And we go, oh, if I see her again, <laughs> yeah. I'll bloody... I'll do... I'll say it that time. Yeah. It takes a year to build the courage yeah. up. Cause, and it isn't even... It's just about... I just... You know, confrontation is just it's just horrible isn't it because it leaves oh. you feeling shit even though that person has said something she didn't mean to upset you and no you know, and she at the same time like, i yeah. think that's the problem with all of those things is on the one hand she 100 percent will be thinking that she's right i think even almost mm. every time almost every single time where somebody's got like a, what turns out to be a pretty toxic opinion. They, they didn't know that, you know, people aren't going out going, well, do you know what? I'm, I want to have a really toxic opinion. They think they're right. Like both sides of people on any war are sure they're right. I'm sh- you know, yeah. it's not, um, and equally, like you said about confrontation, I'm not even sure that is necessarily the best way to affect change in how people see the world because I would far yeah. rather, I don't think there was any, I and mean, this is also justifying my own cowardice, <laughs> But, um, <laughs> but I, um, I don't think there's necessarily much to be said for those. It's very, very hard in those one-to-one conversations to change someone's point of view. But if you can put an experience into a story that then thousands of people hear, I think that's yes. genuinely a more powerful way of potentially affecting change in how someone sees the world. Yeah. But not only have I justified my cowardice, but also our jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, oh no, I just, I take what, I, yeah, yeah, my, yeah, my way of standing up to everything is to take it, yeah, and then put it into my 20 minutes, <laughs> and then, yeah, 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 I know that's how, yeah, that's our way of standing up to everything. Um, I, uh, I, 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 funnily enough, talk about that the unicorn on the shirt. I remember, and this was only 14, 15 years ago, I was living in Maidstone in Kent, and I remember wearing a pink shirt. And it was just a polo shirt with things on it. And, and I turned up at the pub and all the lads there, they were like, what the fuck? Fuck you, pink. And, I'm like, this is, and that's only, like I say, yeah. very recently. Yeah, that's this century. And, and that, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I got, I, actually, last week, there's a, there's a couple of lads I know that they've got a clothing company, SOS Clothing. Yeah. And uh, brilliant clothing. If anyone's listening, get, on, get on, the, on the website. It's brilliant. But they had some guy messaged them and said, because uh, they do like a random box thing like they they just sent like you pay for this box and they send you a load of stuff that's fun and yeah it's brilliant so you don't know what you're gonna get but this guy had messaged back he went yeah none of that pink gay shit oh yeah unsubscribe so, unsubscribe well, it, well they did well he, he, you could see the, the back and forth and he went you know what mate i don't think you're for us and he, and then the guy went oh well don't be like that i'm only joking he's like no nah, we don't really want your custom and the guy's like oh we'll refund it and he goes I already have laters nice and nice yeah, like, yeah, you yeah, know what? that's the best advert for a clothing yeah. company i have ever heard rich it mate it's great isn't it I'm and it, it really looking them up yeah do it yeah. do it sos sos clothing they're good lads right. very good lads <laughs> and it and i'm like even like last that, that's last yeah. week yeah 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 that's still happening yeah. You know, it's. I mean, I remember years ago, my my eldest son wanted an ironing board and an iron for his birthday. Yeah. So he and he would have been a, t- a tiny child, and uh, we didn't even we didn't even bat an eyelid. We went, yeah, of course, if that's what you want. I mean, he did say, I want an iron and an ironing board, like mum's. Nice, now, like a toy one. Like this, yeah. yeah. And this is in the nineties, yeah. but the the amount of flack that we got from some fa- family members, yeah. madness. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's um, it's funny, isn't it? My um, even my parents are quite funny about the, some of the stuff I get my kid. It's um, if my my dad weirdly is sort of more up for getting him things like kitchen sets and stuff like that, but 
he will yeah, right. say terrible things. <laughs> <That's it>. oh. <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember having a fallout with my dad when, when my brother, who's um, uh, twenty now, but um, when he was about two or three, and I was at their house, and um, uh, six feet under that series that was on for years, and oh, that yeah. was on the telly. Really inappropriate, probably for a two or three year old to be in the room. Anyway, like the opening, <laughs> the opening uh, sequence of it was. It's all about funerals, I think, wasn't it? But anyway, there's like a, That's right, a black yeah. screen, and then it fills up. It's really beautiful, and it fills up with all of these white flowers. And and James, my brother, was a f- fizzy boy, like <laughs> two year old, mm. and he was in the middle of like fight, like some fight with himself. Really, like wigged out and he stopped and looked at the screen with these flowers on on the telly and went whoa and my dad was like oh gay i was like wow (laughs) and i called him on that i mean i was just like dad that's so but then dad's like oh god you're so london you're so london am i a homophobe yeah yeah. am i a homophobe (laughs) yes like you're doing yeah (laughs) yeah but you're doing it you know yeah you're you're all so funny you just don't know your Boundaries, like you, again, like you're another generation of what it is or isn't all right to Josh, Josh about, I suppose. Yeah. Well, how did he? Because you you've recently come out. Is it recently? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the last yeah. Year. How did he? Uh, yeah. How did he find he that? He thinks it's really funny. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he just smirked when I told him. He um. It was, I was really nervous, but I just sort of made a deal with myself. And if I'm honest with my shrink about like, it right. got to the point where, cause I'm good mates with both my parents and it was starting to feel um, duplicitous that I was talking about it so freely in my friendship groups and in my work that I hadn't mm. said anything, you know, to them. And yes. I was like, ah, so I, I was like, right, well, when there's a, uh, when there's a natural opportunity for it, um, I'll just uh, I'll have those conversations, and then I'd I'd it come up and and I told my mum, and that's another story in itself. But um, uh, then I, she'd said, "Well, you know, I don't think you need to tell." She was a bit, you know, one of the not perfect things she said was, "I don't think you necessarily need to tell your stepdad or your dad." And I was like, "Oh, I think, you know, I think I do. Mm. I think I probably yeah. do." Um, <laughs> what am I going to just? Shall I just introduce them to my to my girlfriend and? Just sit, just, just curveball it like that, Jesus. So anyway, yeah, I was say no, say nothing at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> just, just be sat there with a cup of tea. Yeah, <laughs> just, yeah. Like nothing. Um, no, my um, God, I've, I've I've not told this story to many people at all. I, I was just having a coffee with my dad in his little flat, and he um, he was talking about. I was saying that um, there were that my ex and me had banned a particular. TV show that our kid had been watching because he reenacts bits of certain shows and there's been one or two shows that he's watched a few of and then just been really violent for a couple of weeks and he's acting out this it's called Dino King if anyone wants to steer clear of it okay. on Netflix um, and he'd just been right. he sort of acts it out and then but it gets really wound up while he's doing it so anyway I was saying that to dad and dad said oh well when um where when his his next batch of kids were uh little um one one his son james had met mates two boys who were never allowed to watch anything they were never allowed to watch any even slightly violent telly or films they were ne- weren't even allowed fizzy drinks and um and i was like all oh, right and he went and what's really funny about it is uh, um one of them's grown up to be the biggest drug dealer in i'll say insert town in hampshire mm. and um and he went and the other one's a bender <laughs> And I was like, oh, oh. and I sat there and I was like, well, do you know what, Dad? <laughs> oh, me, this is so eggy. Even <laughs> I was like, funny you should say that because I'm I'm a, at least half a bender, Dad. And just sort of put it in his own language. And he was like, all oh, right. Wow. He was just like, oh, all oh, oh, right. Like that. And he smirked the <laughs> smirk on his face. He just is. He, he just was tickled. Um, oh, I, it's one of those funny things where. I, my mum told me that when I was so when I was about eleven, I am. Um, I, I think it's not a coincidence. That's when my parents were breaking up. But my God, they definitely needed to break up. Um, but mm. that I, that was a rough old year for lots and lots of reasons. And um, I had a, a like I stopped eating and stuff. And um, 
I just had a rough old year. And my dad, apparently, in one of their few discussions about it with my mum, had said, I think maybe she's a lesbian. Um, which is really funny, I think, yeah, because right. actually, I I don't think I was like I never I don't I don't have any recollections of any crushes. I never had crushes on girls at school. Like I was so into boys, and, yeah, um, right. and I've had loads of. So I I don't know what to identify as really. Something changed rather than me. I'm not one of those people mm. that knew when they're from they were tiny kid that they were queer um, at all. I'm not saying I wasn't like on a spectrum, but I didn't. I never had any dalliances, like the no. odd kiss off my nuts on recreationals. <laughs> <laughs> Who hasn't exactly, done that? Exactly, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That's just um, yeah. that's just having a nice open mind. I didn't have, fall yeah. for anyone. There weren't a, like, and I didn't. I, I genuinely was someone who would be like, well, I, I think she's very good looking, that person, and you know, but I wouldn't. I didn't want to get in people's pants. Something changed. Something fundamentally changed. And um, so he was wrong then as well. But I think that's why yeah. the smirks spread across his face because he probably thought, oh, I always knew that or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. But um, he's just, and then he's been, you know, he's been quite honest about, he's told, you know, various family members and stuff who've not taken to it well. I couldn't give a shit though. Do you know what I mean? That's the joy of coming out in mm. your mid thirties. Um, Cause I think if you yeah. have to endure that when you're a kid or a teenager and, your your very every fiber of your self worth because you don't really know who you are yet depends on what your loved ones think of you and how much they yes. respect you. Whereas when you're thirty six, it's just like well, I don't, I couldn't <laughs> give a shit what Uncle Jim thinks. <laughs> Apparently, my no. I have an uncle whose name isn't really Jim, but who said, "Oh God, we've already got one of those in the family." Because um, <laughs> his brother's gay, <laughs> it's disowned oh, brother's sake. gay. Yeah, it's madness. Uh, but um, it's one of those funny things where I think if you talk to people who've had a lifetime of being oppressed for their queerness, they're quite sad mm. about my coming out story to my dad. Whereas in the context of knowing my dad and knowing that I I am new to this tiny drop in privilege so far, <laughs> I have a lot to learn. <laughs> um, that actually this was fine. Like there is no hatred there's no drop in respect he's not going to change the way he's he he will he'll be like lovely to my girlfriend like he's he's sound like he just needed to Mm. it's how he copes with stuff is to get angry or laugh that's his that's what he does that's the that's his range that's his pair Mm. of emotions and um he uh your pair of emotions and he uh and he chose laughter and um and uh, I, had, I had a lovely story actually because he's been so jolly and he's he's said questions and stuff and he's just he's he's very positive but there's this little naughty little smirk I think he thinks the whole thing's a bit funny um, uh, that one of my dear mates who still lives down in Dorset where uh, he lives walked past him and um, outside of Par Bas Per and um, she said one of them said have you heard Jess's news or whatever and um, she said they both said yeah yeah of course and um she said to him well done keith like you've been you've been really sound about it you've been really lovely and he went oh, have i done it right and he seemed so <laughs> he had no idea whether he'd had the right reaction i mean nor am i it did involve the word bender it's not ideal but um <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, inten- it's the it intent it's the intent isn't it he wasn't with yeah, that generation yeah. it just is the intent yeah. you know it, 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 yeah yeah like he wasn't yeah he wasn't it was no. It wasn't saying it in an angry, derogatory way. It no. was his way of because Bender's quite. It's a funny one. The word Bender. Yeah. It's quite playful. Well, it's yet I've weirdly, been bollocks you know. for it because I've because I've never known. I've I haven't had this lifetime of being no, um, no. feeling other and outside and different because I wasn't. Um, I I early on in a in another podcast um, w- without this context used the word mm. Bender for myself and. Um, they, it was a very woke, woke, woke podcast. You can have one guess at what oh, it was. Right, yeah. And um, <laughs> I was given the opportunity to have that bit removed. And so I did just to save the fucking yeah. 800 tweets. No, that's overdoing. I, I haven't that's, got that yeah. many followers, Rich, but I just get one or two nasty <laughs> tweets that would ruin my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's, it's, I yes. like, oh, well, I just didn't and, know. I didn't yeah. know the rules. And it's like, I remember listening to one of these, your brilliant podcasts of this and listening to someone say, actually, we learn through ba- breaking the rules and then not being so defensive when we're caught up on it, you know, but also not yes. being cancelled for it. That's not how it works, you know. Exactly. It's that. It's like, I remember, yeah, I, I said it, I've said it by mistake. I've said it twice. When I was a kid, 
we we call each other benders all mm. the time. It was just you didn't. There wasn't any sex. Uh, there wasn't nothing sexual attached no. to it. You you know you just call each other benders because it was a funny yeah. word. And then I remember I was at a I was at a gig last year actually, and this guy heckled me. Yeah. And it and I don't even know where it came from. I meant to say bellend, <gasps> and I said bender. Oh. I went, what do you fucking say, you bender? And then I went, I sort of took a step back and I went, oh, fuck. Oh, and I just, I didn't even acknowledge it. I moved yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, And I kept going and it was, it didn't, I didn't, I think people, like, I don't know what happened, but no one really said anything. But it, I, I, I remember being in the car going, I'm like, oh man, why was that there? Why was that at the forefront? Yeah. Well, it wasn't at the forefront, of my, though, was you know, it? Like, it, uh, it, and no. it, it, it's just everything that you've remembered it. You'll never, ever do it again because you've remembered it. Like, no. I think we can shock ourselves. And I think there's a lot of, isn't there like really interesting theories or maybe even facts? I don't know, but that, that like swear words um come from a really different bit of our brain to the rest of our language and it's why they can serve oh really yeah so because um there's emotion attached to them and it's why they're so useful like um they do this test they wheel out this test i've seen people like brian blessed and stephen fry have to do it on telly where you they put someone has to put their hand in freezing freezing uh icy water and you see how long you can keep it in there for and you do it once when you can swear and once where you can't and if you can swear you oh. can and keep it in there way longer because it's releasing emotions like there's a catharsis to it um and so and i think and really it feels i think words like swear words and um laughter you know i think those things aren't as voluntary as we think so i don't don't beat yourself up that it was at the front of your brain i think it comes from a panic place actually that's a bit further in i think it was yeah yeah, yeah you're right and then that other, like you were saying just now is that we're not allowed to make mistakes, it seems. You know, there are people that are out to offend and they are out to yeah, hurt people. That's different. But every now and again, yeah, exactly. But we're human beings and we make mistakes and we fuck up, yeah. but we're not allowed to do that. We Straight away, it's like, right, that person has to lose everything. Yeah. Like, yeah Hold yeah. on. Uh, you know, and it, I mean, it, there are people like, for example, your Epstein's of the world. Yeah, that, yeah they need they didn't need to lose his life, but he, he needed to lose everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because of what he was, he was an evil monster of a man. <laughs> yeah, but somebody I mean, else that's pretty black and white. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I don't need to. I should have just said. The, I don't know why I'm explaining. <laughs> no, I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> for anyone who's not <laughs> anyone who's no idea who. Yeah. 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 Anybody else? <laughs> they, they. It's this need to destroy a life because they've said a, a wrong word at the wrong time yeah. and mm-hmm. we need to recalibrate that it's ridiculous well it's um it's so uh, it's so hard i think we're humans are such complicated beasts and we mm. we um we i think social media is probably kind of 80% of the issue this it's it can be such a force for good but there's a lot of stuff that anger spreads a lot more quickly than any other emotion on it. And mm, I think, yeah. especially, for, I think especially British people, like, or people from the UK, we particularly love a bit of moral indignance because we do collectively and individually enjoy feeling morally superior to someone else. So, yes. And on top of that, if you then become part of a, a mob, a collective, who are all collectively feeling anger, which, of course, during something like a pandemic, where we're all part of a collective trauma anyway, then mm. then, then, then Council Town becomes such an enormous thing. All the nuance comes out of everything. Um, and, 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 and the worst thing is, I think, the, the majority of people who are so into this, it's, it's such an unnecessary end points we've got to from things that were old from start points like the me too hashtag that was so brilliant and so pivotal and a history defining and changing but then if you take mm. it all the way to council town as a blanket thing then oh, i don't know it's not this, i don't think about yeah. crime that way either i did law at uni and it's so it, it, it takes such a huge almost un uh against your instinct shift to intellectualize yourself out of wanting revenge or um the mm. end of things to see that that actually that humans are it's just not how humans get better it's not how people become better people it, it, to no. be ended <laughs> yeah 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 exactly that's it isn't it yeah i think that with the with the me too thing i know i got a bit 
caught up in it because I, I, I've had conversations with people and it was like all men of this and all men of that. And then I was going, hang on a minute, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. This, that's, that's not going to help anybody. And then like, well, you're just helping it. And I'm, no, I'm not, I'm trying. But then I realised instead of me going against it and trying to def- defend them, the few men that haven't sexually assaulted anybody, yeah. the, the, what you do is go, all right, I need to, instead of battling, battling the people that are coming at, at the men, mm. I need to join forces with them and then talk to the men, you know, or like turn around and go, right, listen, a lot of men, a lot of us men are fucking problematic. Yeah. We need to talk to each other. Yeah, absolutely. Rather than rather than, you know, rather than going at women and going, no, fuck you, it's not all men. Go, actually, yeah, there's a lot of men. Well, it's an, we, again, know, it's an instinctive so. human, I would say even animal first defensive reaction. And it makes sense because that whole, the exposure of the... Uh, universality of that experience for women. It, it is, it's not to say that wasn't really horrible and sad and distressing for men. Even if men had perpetrated things, there'll be, there'll be men who perpetrated things who didn't know they'd done anything wrong until suddenly yeah. the whole world is going, every single woman that you know has had several horrible fucking things happen to them. And, it, yeah. and, and just all sort of like having our eyes wide open to that at once. I mean, it's one of the most incredible things. I feel very grateful that that's happened in my lifetime. I feel like I, f- I feel like it's fundamentally changed the way you look to everything. And it, and it was so necessary. It was so necessary, <laughs> but, no, but, um, but it's, um, yeah, again, you know, it's whether how far down the road of piety do you take it? How much empathy do you stop then having, especially historically? You've just, you just can't be too anachronistic in terms of looking at people's behaviour. I, I don't know. I really, really think there's room for more nuance and empathy in everything. But I am so glad that yeah, we've absolutely. changed the way that we fundamentally look at whether those things are okay from yeah. in the future and from well, now, yeah. at least. Oh, God, yeah. It made me realise that... Like you just like you just said, all women, all women have had some experience with some with someone yeah. somewhere. Like I, I mean, I've had a shit time with 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 certain women, but not not on that level. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have this story I was carrying around that I felt I couldn't tell anybody. You know, it it, it really opened my eyes to to the to the to the levels the, the yeah. how 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 deep this goes it's it's it was quite well something. it was so it was systematic like i feel um i feel part of quite an interesting generation in terms of how we framed our sexual interaction with partners blokes for me up until super recently like i um oh god i mean i don't really know where to start but i, I had a couple a, a distinct pair of people uh one when I was a teenager and one when I was in my early 20s with things that I look back on after me too one of them was glaring the one when I was about 12 like I don't know what he's thinking he was much older and stuff but the um the other one was way more wishy-washy and my generation and I had told friends about it at the time um I basically I I'd been seeing this bloke um uh I worked with him. We were friends. We were seeing each other. It wasn't emotionally involved particularly. I think he did want to start a relationship. I wasn't like there. I think I was still, I was still pining for an ex, I think. Um, but I wasn't mm. going to start going out with him. And I called it off and was like, we're not going to be seeing each other anymore. And um, he turned up to my birthday drinks a few weeks later. And um, we were in like guzzy pubs in South East London. Mm. And I don't think it was him, but at some point along the night, early doors of the night, something happened to my drink because I don't remember anything from about half nine. Oh, wow. And um, I woke up the next morning and I'm, I probably presented as fine because none of my friends said anything. Everyone was wasted. And that's the culture I was in. Like were the, were the women, part of our feminism, although we never identified as feminists ever, uh, or few no. people did, but they were weird at uni even, you know, and, and for a few years beyond. Like, it was like lad culture. That was the type of feminist we were. It yeah. was keeping up with the lads. We we drank hard. Like, we were f- f- wild. And it was all about, it was like, there was it, it, there was joy in promiscuity, but it was, um, it, oh, so basically, long story short, I, I woke up the next morning after my, like, birthday night out at, uh, uh, in bed with him. Um, oh, right. And... And that, and that's obviously like, uh, well, 
I woke up, yeah, well, I mean, we woke up in the end and we were sleeping together and I, and I woke up in the middle of that and was like, okay, well, that's not, that's not okay. You know, mm. that's something you look back after me too. And yeah, go, no, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah. Like you don't, you'd, we'd, I'd broken us up. We'd, we'd, I'd said we weren't seeing each other anymore. Why were you even yeah. there, really? Um, yeah. And it's not, I, I'm, I genuinely, uh, I've gone back and had a conversation with this person and they were like, right. uh, I was drink like they were perfect in their response. Mm. It was like immediate apology, ha- totally hands up admitted that he had no recollection of it at all, but essentially said right. was a functioning alcoholic at that time. And okay. then you're like, right. Okay. Fair enough. I, I was on the spectrum. I mean, we were drinking so much, like it, it was like, mm. so it's not black and white. He doesn't need to be canceled. I don't want my son mm, though yeah. to ever be in that situation. I, I wouldn't, I will implore on him never to take the risk that if someone is that hammered that they're not going to yeah. remember tomorrow, you can't sleep with them. You can't even sleep next to them. Yeah. And that's no. it. And that's what's changed. It, I, I, I'm not telling that story because I think that man was a bad man. I really don't think he's a bad no. man at all. I think, actually, I think he's a lovely man. I just think we've reframed mm. things uh, and our. Uh, completely what our idea of consent has changed so dramatically from when I was yeah f- f- in literally in the last decade, I think it's been quite creeping. And then me too was like, <clears throat> blew the lid on it. And it's brilliant. Mm. That's why I think it's brilliant that we can now look back and go, because I do remember feeling gr- like grotty the next few days, like a bit, you know, emotionally grotty. And I yeah. do remember saying to a f- one friend in particular, a female mate, what had happened and she was like, oh, well, we're all drunk. <laughs> You know, no one really cares. Right. And that's not a bad friend either. That's someone I'm still dear friends with. We just didn't look at it in the same way as we did, as we do now. No. It's funny, isn't it? And it was, it, yeah, I, I remember, yeah, when I was a kid, or when I was young, not a kid, when I was younger, and there was a girl, and we used to hang around at the park, and she got she got absolutely battered. And we were all pissed, you know, we were all yeah. doing whatever. And then I remember, I remember walking her home. And then taking her home, and then and then you know, and, and her mum was still up. She's like, and she had a go at me. She's like, "What the fuck have you lot been doing?" And like, oh, you know, and I'm pissed as well. And I dropped her home and went off. And I remember the next day, mm. a couple of my mates going, "So what'd you do? What'd you do?" I went, "Nothing. I took her home." And there was that kind of, like, "Yeah, but you could have had, you could have done this, you could have done that." I'm like, what are you talking about? Why would I do that? And it, it didn't yeah. really. I didn't really think about it again. I'm like, "Fuck that! You, that you would have thought that was completely fine." Because she probably would have gone along with it because yeah. she didn't know what she was doing. And that, yeah, yeah. I, you know, that's, that. yeah, funny, man. It's, but that's already, even the way you're yeah. talking about it has changed so yeah. much, hasn't it? Like the idea of, yeah. I don't yeah. think now that most right-thinking people would like, even if it's someone you're head over heels in love with, particularly fancy someone who could hardly stand up. But it was just yeah. a different culture because so many nights, like nights out, that's how everybody got. It's like just yeah. smashing, smashing the bevs back. Awful, <laughs> awful. I feel so grateful that I haven't got myself in more trouble. And I, I used yeah. the wrong language there again. Like, got myself in more trouble. But ultimately, I was complicit in my lifestyle for sure. Um, I just mostly surrounded myself with lovely people, and still do. Yeah. We're looking for a sponsor to help get this brilliant conversation to an even bigger audience. Sponsoring the show, as well as a promotional trailer, means that your message and our message will be inserted into some of Acast's biggest podcast titles. Get on board and partner with Insane in the Fembrain. Go to pauldaniels.tv for more information. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's yeah, I'm glad it's changed. And it's funny, you, you, like, because my lads, I just brought them up as best the best yeah. I could. I didn't... You know, and then it turns out that you know, like, oh, good, they're not rapists. Oh, good, they're not, they're not, they're not racist. Brilliant, it just happens to touch to be. You know, what a result! Because <laughs> that's the thing: is if you don't know that you're what you're doing is wrong, right. you just you don't know. Yeah. And, and it's yeah, I'm glad that this happened, and I'm glad that it, it certainly taught me a few things about my my uh my outlook on on things like i remember i've said this before i was in australia i was in perth and there's another uh comedian uh i won't mention her name uh but we were 
she had something she happened to her when she was a she was a, she was younger and she was doing a show about right. it and we were sat in this in this restaurant late at night we we're all having drinks and we we're all sat around you know having a laugh and and then she because she's very she's you know all men are all men are beasts all men are all men are this and that because that's you know she's had a horrible thing yeah. happen to her and she stood up and she went Look, I've got, I'm gonna go she's like because you know and she, and she made some comment she's like because basically all men are potential rapists and. And we are, as she said, you know, you're at no point, you know, if I, if you lot don't have to worry about getting attacked and raped and murdered on the way home. Mm. And I was, I stupidly turned around. I went, well, it's not all men, is it? I mean, men get raped as well. And it was, uh, oh, I can't remember his name. There's an Australian comic was doing a show about him being sexually abused. Oh, God. Uh, when he was older, uh, when he was older at a party. Fucking hell. Um, yeah. And then it, and then it wasn't until later on. It was actually Joe Rogan. I was oh, watching wow. Joe Rogan special and he he did a bit about it and he said, you know, you see these men going, oh, it's not all men. It's like, yeah, men get raped too. He's like, yeah, by men, you fucking dickhead. <laughs> and I went, oh, shit. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, it, and it took, I went, oh, fuck. Yeah, shit. Yeah, <sighs> and it took that. It took that moment for me to go, oh, my God. Yeah. And I thought about that moment and I thought about, because we fell out. We fell out because then she was like, "You're a cunt, just like the rest of them." And it was—I well, tried to apologise the next day, but I was, and, but it wasn't happening. And then it all got out of hand, and it was like, Do "You know what? I'll, I'll just keep away. I don't need yeah. it." And then watching that, I mean, fucking hell! Yeah, it was this massive epiphany, this massive realization. Yeah. Well, I you think know. that was another oh, thing that was hard about the whole sort of unraveling of the enormity of of the of the hashtag and of the of the change of sort of. Of that realization, the hard thing I think that was hard for for men was that actually, like, oh, still as a world, we 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 hear a lot more of men's stories in, you know, theatre, films, TV, books. You know, still still there's an imbalance in. We're so used to hearing like a collective in comedy. You know, until recently, it's these are sort of male domains and it's men's stories, not that we know. Uh, to, to take away from any anything about how sort of crushed men's emotions get in terms of mm. how they're brought up and stuff. But the world has been full of men's stories and women are used to listening yeah. to men's stories and going, well, you know, this isn't my place to say something. That's what's always happened forever. That's the history. Yeah. That's why there's, that's why there's still not of quality. That's, that's what the page is part of what the patriarchy has always been. Um, and it, it was a big moment where actually all women wanted men to do in that moment was just, it, 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 we're not saying you're all baddies. Most people weren't saying all men are baddies or all men are dangerous. But right now, can you all just shut up? Because we're we're all yeah. re- realising this has happened to all of us. And this is a moment for us, actually, to mm. feel like we're not alone. And the last thing you yeah. want in the middle of that is someone going, I'm all right, though, I'm, I'm all right, though, aren't I? Like, it's, yes, or whatever. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? You'll hear about it soon See, if you're that... not. Like, just let us, <laughs> let us have this time of it's being our collective experience that's going f- f- viral. Yes. Yeah, and, that, and do you know what? You just saying that right then has made me – I get it now. I totally get it because there was someone else was saying, oh, what, we're supposed to – we got to shut up yeah. but we got to say something. And then a lot of men were going, well, don't, what are we supposed to do? Be quiet or say something. And then, and it was, I know I got a bit confused with it. I didn't say anything, but I was sort of sat there going, yeah, I don't know what we're supposed to do. But now you've just saying that. I go, oh yeah, of course. That, that, now it's been explained. I get it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, you know, and, and, it, and it's funny that, the, you know, there's a big thing like people say, look, if you're, if a mate of yours, if you're no, if you know someone that's, sexually assaulted somebody or done something, then it's your duty to say something to them. Yeah. And I have done a couple of times. I've I've spoken to a couple of people. But because the person that's been attacked doesn't feel like they can say anything or yeah. come they don't want to come out. They don't want to be part of that. It doesn't it doesn't get anywhere. No. And now there's a couple of people that I've got I that we that you and I work with that I know about and I go, I can't I can't say anything and I don't know what to do. It's unbearable, isn't it? It's, it's unbearable. Yeah. But it, and again, it's not I, for, you know, it, all you can do is know it and all, and all you can do is warn people that, you know, are at risk of mm. getting into, getting into dalliances with yeah. those people. Um, yeah. All you can do is know it's not, it's not your, 
story to tell, but it's uh, there's a burden, mm. there's an emotional burden in carrying those stories around. You know, that knowledge yeah. around, I should say. Yeah. Yeah. I don't need, yeah. I don't but know. I'm glad it's, that we talk, you know. Yeah. I'm so glad that people talk because that is a protection yeah. in itself. You know, um, the more people that know that someone's problematic. Yeah. <laughs> But talking as well, that's the important yeah. bit. This comes up all the time, communication, because a lot of men are scared to ask questions. Yeah. And this is why we this is why we're doing this, is because I you know, I from my experience, I don't know how to ask these questions. I don't know how to speak to people about these things. I don't know how to bring it yeah. up. You know, and it's and it, hopefully someone listening to this will go, Oh, okay, yeah, I get it, I get it. And I'm trying to more for me as well as anyone else, trying to learn and be better. Yeah. But you only do that by communicating with people, don't yeah. you? So, you know, and it's but it's not always easy. No, it's not. It's not, I and it's know. not. Um, no. Especially if you've not been, you know, you've been conditioned to like shut up and put up. Then, then actually, it can be mm. really hard. Um, and and also, yeah. I don't know. Like, uh, yeah, I, I think. But it's like like. Well, we hear, like, you, what's happened now is that a lot of men will hear the word feminist, they'll hear the word patriarchy, and straight away they'll shut down and go, oh, fuck me, this again. Well, it's not, um, uh, it's uh, not uh, an expression, uh, yeah. it's no comment on anyone. It's, I'm not talking about any individuals no. who talk about that. It's a, it's a fact of the history of humanity is that men have been in charge of stuff and women haven't. And there's a hundred thousand yeah. side effects of that. Like, I'm not like a scholar on feminism. I've got mates who've you know, so well read, you know, and they under I don't even really understand what all the different, I mean, God, don't, don't tell some of my be- favourite employers, but I don't even really understand fully like what all the different waves of it are and stuff like that. I'm not, I'm not that guy really. I just, there, there's a no. fundamental indisputable fact that over the history of society, as we've known it, m- men have been put in charge of things. And uh, as a result of that, women's, haven't had a women haven't had equality and still haven't got equality and and and, mm. and you know i i can i can see because in my 20s i would be like well yeah we have like do you know what i mean i do what i want i'm gonna have a career that's equality and you're like well also you know you're not taking into account any any nuance any of the any of the it's so underlying the it's not like the pay gap is the most obvious physical material example but actually there's an underlying yeah. thing in there and it comes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of when my kid was wearing a unicorn top and the woman said why aren't you bringing him up to be a proper man it comes back to that it's because you our, our defined gender roles are so unhelpful if if we're still in a world which we are where boys however tacitly people don't know they're doing it they've ev- there's no like evidence that Oh God, I'm going to, this will upset people, but people fundamentally think that baby boys want to play with a car or a train and yeah. girls don't. Like there's no evidence that babies' brains are that different. We, it's our conditioning is so deep that we'll, we'll lean them that way. Um, yeah. and, and, and of course, more testosterone does things. Oh, it's so complicated. But basically, as a result yeah. of men having always been put in charge of everything over the course of centuries and centuries and centuries and centuries, men are a lot more confident than women. Women are often, whether they know it or not, brought up, but not just by their parents, but by their whole families, friends, everyone who has an influence on them, teachers, to be less confident, less noisy, less big. And and all of our language around uh, strength, uh, volume, taking up space... Um, being in charge when it comes to women, there's still so much fucking work to be done. And it's that in that mm. sort of basic philosophical, theoretical sense, that's why that's why anyone who's it, all feminist means, oh God, I mean, Bridget Christie's nailed it in a much funnier way. I feel like I'm just being very TED talky here, Rich. But all, all <laughs> feminism great. means is that you think women actually are just as good at men, good, just as good as men. And it doesn't, it, and it, it, it doesn't mean you, th- anything that doesn't mean you think men are cunts it doesn't it, it's nothing to do that it's just to, and, it, and it means also i think now feminism means and a man what does it mean masculinity like i think part of feminism now as well is like let's sort of loosen the shackles of man and woman as a definition yes. of who who people are because there's now you know again insurmountable evidence that there is more than it's not just two genders it's not a binary world human beings are so extraordinarily complicated 
You know, yes. you can change sexuality yeah. in your thirties. You can. I'm yeah. a tomboy, or but I like dresses. I don't. I'm not. We we love rules, and actually, a lot of them they might make you feel safe. Those rules and those boundaries and definitions and stuff, because it makes you feel like you're in control and you know what's what. But I, I, and it's so people are scared of words like feminism and non-binary and stuff like that because it represents mm. a change and perhaps something you don't understand, but it's fine to not understand it. But don't go well. Then it's a load of shit. Educate yourself. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Then that's what I'm trying to do. With yeah. this, you're trying to, yeah, yeah, you know, trying to, I'm just, because I, I, rather than, it, I think I was getting really upset that everyone was just cancelling each other yeah. and shouting at each other. And I just want everyone to talk to each other and, and work it out. And that's on both sides. That's not yeah. just men against women. That's not just about, you know, uh, people against trans people. Yeah. And, you know, I just want everyone to sit down and go, right, like you've just said, this is fucking weird yeah. that we exist, people exist. This weird that we've put this framework around us that we've gone right. You're a man, so you do this, this, and this, and you're a woman, and you do that, that, and that. And it's like it's more fluid than that. Like you've just said, yeah. you know, it's there's so much more to it. But it's society, isn't it? Society says, and I've said this before. This is why there's a lot of mental health issues because we're told by society this is the way you perform, this is what you do to become a decent citizen. Yeah. That's how you are. And if you don't fit into that, that's when you start to feel isolated and weird and you go oh, fuck I'm not that so I must there must be something wrong with me yeah you know and that, and so society needs to change and I think this feels this feels like the biggest the, the biggest surge yet yeah. I mean mind you because it's probably because I'm here but this the, this wave of feminism and and the conversations we're having feels like the biggest push yet the biggest wave where of change is, isn't it and I think that's yeah, where people yes. bulk and I think that's where I think that is where all the fear comes from, you know, because change is fucking terrifying. And I do think people yeah. need to be given a chance to oh, maybe catch up. It's like a patronising word, but that sort of is what I mean. I mean, I think history repeats itself uh, quite regularly. and it, yeah. but, it, but it's gone. It, it's In our lifetimes, it's gone so fast, the rate of change, you know. But I think, like, you, you mm. talked about sort of trans community, they like... You watch the way that people. It does feel like it's there's echoes of. Um, I mean, it was not that long ago. Like even in the eighties, uh, there was a massive movement, especially in America, like trying to say that um, paedophiles were gay people, because if you don't understand, right. didn't under, people didn't understand gay people, and so they would say, well, uh, that the, the, their their natural logic of something they didn't understand was then fear, and then you go, well, and then if you uh, print imprint a fearful vision of someone and make in your head they're perverse literally just means different yeah. then you then start reading in all these other negative things and that was there were there were religious people who were, who made it their life's mission thinking they were doing good and because there was no evidence whatsoever it fizzled out but it feels like that's happening again now with this whole mm. like uh, gen gender neutral toilets thing it's like there's no you know this idea that we're going oh well well surely then doesn't that mean that's going to be a load of like you know actually rapist yeah. men in women's toilets it's like no trans people couldn't be more oppressed there is zero evidence that, it, that the least you can do to make someone feel comfortable is let them I, I just there's no there's mm. literally none evidence that anybody is going to go oh, do you know what I'm I'm going to just sit in, mm. now I'm allowed in their toilets. I can't remember what comedian, someone else made a really, some brilliant comedian made a lovely point about they were, could always, anyone could always go in your toilet. <laughs> just as <laughs> there was a sign on the door. I think if, somebody, yeah, if, somebody, yeah, exactly. if somebody's that keen to do a rape, they're not going to not go in yeah. your toilet just because it yeah, there's someone with a skirt on the door. Well, it's that assumption that we're all, all men are just waving their willies yeah. around in there. It's like, you know, I mean, I get it. I've, there's been a couple of occasions where I've I've been in a in a toilet and there's been a woman in there and I could see she's vi she's visibly uncomfortable, mm -hmm. even though it's gender neutral and yeah. and so I get it. There are there's going to be some people that but again this goes back to that we should be having conversations Thanks instead of shutting it. each other down. Let's that, let's talk about it then, right? How does this make you feel? How does it make? Oh, but I, that's how I see myself. I sort of stood there and I could see the argument both sides. Yeah. I could see what's happening. And I'm sort of not. I'm perfect. Fuck me. I'm. You know. I'm. I'd fuck up as much as anybody. But I, I look at it and I go, Why aren't you talking to each other? Why are you yeah. fighting? It's. It's this. Goes back to what I was saying. It's fucking amazing that we exist. Yeah. 
and and it's not as it's not as as black and white as as everyone seems to think it is and you know, people are more fluid and, oh, I don't know. It's complicated. It, it, yeah. It's so oh, yeah. complicated. Yeah, and again, yeah, yeah. I think it's just things like having just shared toilets. It's a culture shift. So it's going to take a bit yeah, exactly. of time for people not yeah. to go, oh, when they see someone who's, you know, presents as a different gender to them in the same laughs. Like, it, yeah. it's not, uh, yeah, there's nothing yeah, yeah. wrong with you. And you're not, uh, you know, overly scared of men or a turf or any, if you like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird, mm. isn't it? Because it, yeah. it will feel weird for a bit <laughs> until, but I still think, yeah. I, I fundamentally would think it's a great thing and would argue for it very much. I just think we need to get used to it because what we've done is a culture change there, a change of how yes, we behave exactly. collectively. Yeah. And you've been brought up, you're like, I know from my experience, you kind of go, this is what a man looks like. That is what a yeah. woman looks like. And women wear this, this mm. and this, and men wear that, that and that. And then, and so now I feel like I've met, I've met, you know, some trans people and there was in sometimes my brain, in my brain, my brain's going, that's a man, <laughs> you know, and, and you're like, and then, you, and then I'm in my own head, I'm going, but no, 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 that's not a man. That's, and then you kind of, uh, you end up just sort of standing there staring <laughs> And they go, are you all right, mate? I go, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Sorry, sorry. I just need a minute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I just need a minute. <laughs> it's just only because of what has been pumped into yeah. me as a, as I've been growing up. And and like you say, now we are all in a in a time of transition. Mm. Not just not just trans people. All of us are now starting to work it out. And and like you say, it's a societal change, yeah. isn't it? And, and it's, it's scary. And I think that's the thing time. to really yeah. important to acknowledge that it is scary. And things like you know, getting your pronouns wrong or your whatever. Mm. Like, again, it's a, it's one of those places where they, it, we, we need to, people need time to make the change and not be made to f feel like they've fucked up on such an enormous yeah. moral level, which, which they might have done. Like, do you, you know that feeling you got in your tummy when you accidentally said bender? I mean, that's mm. what you do. Yeah, but, that. But, and on the flip side, um... There's nothing wrong with feeling a little bit of fear about saying the right thing and being very careful yeah. about saying the right thing. I don't quite understand why people are so like, oh, God, you know, it's so stressful. It's like, oh, well, poor them. You know, th think how stressful it is mm. for the person who, yeah. <laughs> you know, who's had to come yeah. to terms with, with the fact that they don't feel like a man or a woman as we know it. And, you know, mm. so actually yeah. just, you know, take your time, but you will get used to saying nay. Like, don't yes. rule out having a laugh about it or feeling weird or fucking up a few times. But really, is is it that awful to have to make that effort? If somebody's had to come to mm. that realisation and live that life and be that much of a minority now? Like, mm, it, yeah. it's. I think people are quick to real, to think that they're the one having the toughest time. <laughs> and actually... Mm. Well, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, and it, yeah it, go on. No, that's it. <laughs> but it's... Uh, <laughs> But it's that it's and then you I've seen I've seen uh, people saying or what you want you know you need to ask this when you meet someone ask them like hello my name's Rich what, how would you like me to what pronoun would you like to use and it doesn't and people don't talk that no. way it's not you, you don't walk into a conversation and start that off and so people so straight away people are already going oh my god I can't we don't talk like that I don't know what to do I won't be able to. I won't be able to ask that question. What do I do? But it, what, what should like again? It goes back to communication. So you just you say hello yeah. to that person. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah. And then as the conversation flows, you start you pick it up. You go, oh, okay. So it's they, and them. It's not he and she. You work it out yeah. as you go along on both sides, totally. you know, because that person then going in that, and so it all comes down to communication. People put it you in there. If, if, it, if people know? have got often, if because people are so bored of uh sort of having to come out as non-binary again and again and again and again mm. and again and again um it, a lot when a lot of their interactions it won't necessarily be relevant but a lot of people have it in their twitter bio or email or yeah. signature don't they if they've got anything more yeah. interesting than a traditional cis cis pronoun i don't know if i'm using the right <laughs> language rich is no, it cis this, pronoun i don't know i don't know who knows? Do you know what? It's all new, isn't it? It's all, it's new. all new. Learning, learning. I, uh, yeah. But I like I learning remember, and I don't mind yeah. learning. I think Me too. I think that's all we can ask of ourselves is to be like both yes. willing and I would say if you're a kind person, fucking enthusiastic actually about learning. <laughs> Absolutely. How, yeah, to, be yeah, the never, kindest, well, how to be the kindest guy about all of this stuff and all of this change. To, yes. 
how to be the how to be the best version of you. <laughs> We've got yeah. all Oprah Winfrey. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny, yeah. isn't it? It's right. <laughs> but that's all I want. I just want, I don't know. I just don't, I don't want to be a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I just want to be as nice to people as I can. But I know sometimes, because of other pressures, really, you can be a bit moody or you can say the wrong thing and you, you're you just not thinking straight. And we need to be a bit more empathetic towards each other, don't For we? Sure. That's it. Yeah. Just, you know what I mean? Um, how old's your son now? He's four. He goes to school four, in that's September. It, yeah, you said, yeah. Open. yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh no! I, I, do you know what? Keep keep up with him, unicorn shirts. Yeah, I think so. oh, I will. <laughs> Luckily, he's pretty. He's um, he's got quite. Uh, I think it. I think it would have happened at this age anyway. But suddenly, very particular about what he wears, and um, it it's very colourful his choice of outfit. But the one very worrying thing, Rich, is he's frequently opting for a sandal and sock. Ah, uh, what? Yeah. No, nah, come on. No, no, no. There are boundaries, aren't there? To I'm sorry. Come on, the come on, mate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sometimes people need a bit of guidance. <laughs> I like the idea that I'm that... I mean, not like I care about fashion, but everybody has boundaries. I like the idea that I'm that parent who's like, right, son, I want you to know yeah. you never have sex <laughs> with anybody who isn't 100% all over you on top of you consenting. You can be non-binary. I don't care who you fancy. You can... I don't... Honestly, you can have any sexuality, persuasion, gender, anything, but you do not wear socks and sandals when you're out with mummy. <laughs> I Jade and I had a massive argument because we'd been we were having we were having couples counselling, right, yeah. and so we were, and it's only up the road, so we were driving up there, and she had her socks on and she put she put my sliders on, <laughs> and, I, and I stood there and I went and I went, do you want to do you do you want to just and I I, I, had to, I just I couldn't I couldn't. Yeah. Bring myself, Good. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was so angry about it, <laughs> and I and I did. So I went. Do you want to put? Why don't you put these on instead? And she <laughs> went mental. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> she went mad, absolutely mad, and rightly so. But yeah. at the same time, because it's in me, I can't stand it. <laughs> so then, so we get to couples counselling, and we have to sit opposite each other. And of course, that's the first thing that comes up. And I'm sitting there because I have to look at this, and I'm fucking livid. <laughs> And not only that, I'm like, they're my socks. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking a piss, woman. <laughs> yeah. oh, I learned a lot about myself that day. What a day. brilliant use of a therapist's time. <laughs> <laughs> and she even said, even, even the therapist was like, well, you know, surely Jade should be allowed to wear what she's like. But she looks a fucking mess. <laughs> it was just terrible. Well, you didn't come terrible. out of that session well, Rich. Nah, not really. Sorry. I've had a, I, I have had a long word with myself, <laughs> but I can't. It's, I just, I don't know. <laughs> just, I you know, I'm walking in, in my head. I'm like, absolutely fuck yourself. <laughs> <I'm> just, ah, <laughs> realizing all the way that it's my fault. I'm the problem. It's really funny. It's really funny. But I've learned. I've learned. And then that's the thing, because, you know, Jade, if the more you say to Jade, don't do that. Yeah, you've, you've pressed the red go, button. Exactly. Not only am I going to do this, Rich, but I'm going to do this every fucking yeah. day until you pull your head. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I've, I've, I've learned. I keep my mouth shut now. <laughs> but no, no sandals and socks. You tell yours yeah. that. That's my one boundary. Yeah, but... The, he sounds like he's going to do it anyway. Yes, he's very willful. Mm, yeah, <gasps> mate. This has been lovely, Jess. Oh, it's been thank joyful. you. What I've really enjoyed this, mate. Lovely conversation. Thanks for having me. No, thank you. I was really, I was looking forward to this one. It's been re they're all great. I, I've really, I'm really it's enjoying. It's a brilliant it. podcast. Thank you. I learned something from from everybody that's been on. And that's, you know, it's it's been great. I've really enjoyed it. Where can we find you on the socials, Jess? Um, I'm at Jessica Foster Q on Twitter and Instagram. And I've got a podcast called Hoovering that's all about eating. That's it. Jade's on yeah, it. Mate. Jade's so there's an episode she of Jade is. on it and there will be in the future. Eventually, one day, we'll get to it, an episode of Rich. Bloody right, yes, mate. Please. I look forward to it. I just to want it. to do one, oh, one after lockdown so that I can, because you're a good cook. So I'm sort of, I don't want to, do a remote one when it's a podcast about eating until I'd rather wait until I can eat your cooking. Oh, of course. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'm going to blow your mind. Yes, please. And we'll both wear sandals <laughs> and socks. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, Jess, Take thank care. you. This has been great. 
produced by Paul Daniels at pauldaniels.tv. I'm Amy. I'm Louise. Join us for your next episode. And today, uh, personally, I'm completely overexcited to be in the home of Arabella Weir. My mother, on her deathbed, literally goes, have you any idea how fattening me and it is? <laughs> God. And I went, Mum, you're dying. And she went, yes, but you're eating mayonnaise. <laughs> and I went, well, we both know which you think is worse. We're at the news building, home of the Times and the Sunday Times, to interview Lorraine Candy. She just looked at me, my eldest, and said, what would you know about fashion? <laughs> oh, my God. Literally, literally my job. <laughs> for the last 30 years. Oh, wow. God. <laughs> Join us for your next episode. Buy your favourite podcast app. Thank you along. for contributing to the conversation as well, because yeah. your podcast is, is great and it's I listen to it on Thank the way you. to work.